Hey everybody, it's Heather here from Bubble Bath and Soap Co. I thought that I would come on and talk to you guys about colorants. Now, colorants are, obviously as it's in the name, things that we use to color bath and body products. So, there are three types of colorants that are most typically used. These are mica, lakes, and water-soluble dyes. Now, there's differences in all three of these and I'm going to talk to you about them today. There's a fourth jar here because I will also be talking to you about synthetic mica, which creates a beautiful shimmer in the water. So I thought it would be fun to show you guys that. So first off, we will talk about mica. Mica is a powdered mineral. It comes in bags or jars typically. This one is from Nurture Soap. This is Orchid Purple. Mica is very shiny in appearance. Um, can almost have like a metallic sort of look to it and it's typically used to decorate the tops of products like bath bombs and bubble bars to paint them or add like pretty little details things like that um, it's not very good for coloring your actual bath bombs because typically to get enough color in your bath bomb or your water you would be using far too much mica that it would end up staining your tub or people <laughs> so um it's typically not great for that i will get a lot of beginners they will say what do you use to color your bath bombs to get such vibrant colors or what will you use to get the tub to turn color because these people are typically using micas um because it's the most easily accessible without knowing about soap suppliers and bath bomb suppliers, things like that. Um, so yeah, so I have here evenly kind of on spoons already, mica, lake, dye, and synthetic mica, ha ha ha. Um, so this is what happens when you mix it with water. So here's the mica here, it's a shimmery powder. We're just going to mix it in. You'll see right away. Do you see what happened? It doesn't disperse very well in water. It pools on the top. And it doesn't color the water very well. It does color the water. If you use enough of it, it will color. But it'll leave little speckles, little pools. You can kind of see like a film. You can even just look on the spoon. This was what will happen in your bathtub essentially. Um, there are ways to try to kind of get around that and that's with using a product called Polysorbate 80. This is what Polysorbate 80 looks like. It is a liquid. It will bind to oils um, and it'll disperse the mica in your water typically by binding it with the oil is my um knowledge <laughs> i could be wrong if i'm wrong feel free to comment um yeah so that is mica for you now just for fun i put a little bit of mica in a little cuppy and i have here 99 percent rubbing alcohol now if you are going to use mica to paint your bath bombs or your bubble bars, you typically mix just a little bit of rubbing alcohol with mica to make kind of like a paint for yourself. And this is what you use to decorate. You see how it's very metallic looking? It's, I'm not sure if you can see it very well, but it's very metallic looking, it's very pretty. So I have just a tiny little embed here. This is a little bath bomb embed. We'll use the smooth side just for fun. If you take a little bit of that mica with rubbing alcohol, you can paint and decorate your bath bombs or bubble bar. Now when using alcohol to paint your bath bombs or your bubble bars, you want to be using higher than 90%. Otherwise, it'll have too much water content and it'll activate your bath bombs. Okay, so next up are lakes. This is 
Perfect Purple Lake from Serafina's uh, Coastal Colors. She makes really good lakes. Lakes are, if I'm correct, aluminum salts, I think, is what the color is bound to. Um, they bind with oil, similar to mica. Um, they give off a lot more color than mica will. They will color bath bombs beautifully, but you do have to uh, use polysorbate 80 as well to not stain someone or leave a ring around a tub. So it's a... I wouldn't necessarily use it if you're a beginner. Um, it's more kind of like you need to experiment with your recipe and polysorbate 80 and whatnot to get it to work just right and not stain you or people or your tub and whatnot. But it is a really good option and it's vibrant and it's really good. So I have some lake here and you'll see what I mean when you mix it with water. Now see, <laughs> this is what I mean when I say it's oil dispersible. When you mix it into water, it kind of takes some work to get it to color. Okay, so you can see right away that it, it, it yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, what's wrong with me? Okay, so you can see right away that it it will stain if you don't use polysorbate 80. It is concentrated, so that was the same amount that I used of mica. And it's much more vibrant. Much, 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 much more vibrant. But you do need to use the polysorbate 80 to prevent staining. So it can be scary if you use too much of a lake. So... The next colorant that we will talk about is water soluble dye. This is amethyst from Fizz Fairy. Um, now these water soluble dyes, they are a powder form. The color that you see in the powder will not necessarily represent the color that will come out in the water. Water soluble dyes um, always show their true colors in water because essentially that they're water soluble. Um, when you're using water soluble dyes in a bath bomb, your bath bomb might not look vibrant if you're just mixing it into your dry ingredients, the dye, rubbing it, whatever. You'll get a nicely colored bath bomb. It might not look that vibrant, but once it hits the water, the vibrancy will be there. The, the color will come right off your bath bomb. Your water will be amazingly colored and it will be wonderful. Now, if you want the same vibrancy that you would get from a lake in your initial bath bomb, then you need to bloom your baking soda. What I mean by blooming your baking soda is you take your water soluble dye, you mix it into some hot water and you make yourself essentially water, colored water, right? Now you mix the water into your baking soda and you mix it and mix it and mix it until your baking soda is a vibrant, beautiful color. But now your baking soda is very wet. It's bloomed. So you have to leave it out to dry. I would say 24 to 48 hours. And then once you do, you will have colored baking soda that you can now use to make your bath bombs. Now, just as an example, I have some bloomed baking soda here. So this is me uh, using yellow. You see it's in clumps because when it does dry, you might get some clumps, but typically you sift all your ingredients anyway when you're making bath bombs. So it's not much of a problem. Now, I will show you what happens when we mix the water soluble dye. And this is significantly less than I used for the lake or the mica. Now this is what happens when we mix it with the water. So you'll see instant color. Now there's no film, there's no pooling. There's just instantly a color payoff. It won't stain the spoon, it won't stain your bathtub, it won't stain people. It's a really good dye to use when making bath bombs. I'm silent right now because this is amethyst. 
and it's clearly not amethyst. <laughs> this is the first time that I've opened this jar, so hmm, interesting. Okay, um, moving on. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to show you is synthetic mica. Now, its proper name is very complicated. Um, synthetic fluorflogotite. Uh, I probably didn't say that right, but it is a powder. It is a mineral. It's very shimmery, very shiny. And when you add it to your water, you get what kind of looks like shimmery lava beautifulness. Now it is a mica, so again, you will need to use polysorbate 80 just to be on the safe side to not stain. Well, you wouldn't typically stain if you're using white, but um, just to not to leave a film or a ring around the tub. So to show you what I mean, is we will mix it in and you will see. Now, is that not crazy? You get that beautiful, like lava type water. I don't know why I keep calling it lava water. I don't think lava shimmers at all, but it's sparkly fairy mermaid water. Okay, there we go. Uh, yeah, so this stuff is great. It is on the pricier side, um, and yeah. So yeah, these are the types of colorants that we typically use. I will typically use water-soluble dyes in my bath bombs, in my bubble bars, uh, in my bubble bath. I will not use them in um, body products, like a body butter. I have done that mistakenly the first time I ever made body butter and it stains someone <laughs> because water soluble dye on direct contact with skin so not dispersed in water will stain so it needs to be dispersed in water so typically in a bathtub or yeah <laughs> or scrubs things like that you might use a tiny tiny bit of the water soluble dye because they are kind of water based um but mostly i try to use micas for body products and I use micas in bath oils as well because it gives that beautiful shimmer. Um, it's awesome to use lakes and water soluble dyes together to get really vibrant bombs with really vibrant color um, if you're using polysorbate 80 and also adding some shimmer. There are different kinds of shimmer products. There are larger grains that'll give you more like a glitter effect. This is very fine, so it gives you more that shimmer. Um, I think I will bid you farewell, and I hope that I taught someone something today, or at least was just informative, and that you had a good time. <laughs> All right, everybody, stay safe, stay inside. Well, yeah, stay inside. <laughs> Have a bath. Have a good day.